and I would like to uh, now uh, introduce Pierre de Gagne from the University of Ottawa to talk about the energy conservation success that they have achieved. He's the Director of Engineering and Campus Sustainability at the University. He's a graduate of System Design Engineering from the University of Waterloo. He's worked for both public and private sector over the past 30 years. He's not taking care of his new grandkids. He's more indulging in his love for sailing. He's working on the implementation of an eco-prosperity program and a series of deep energy retrofits, which are seeing return on investments of greater than 20% uh, for the University of Ottawa. This is just where I fit in. Uh, I'm, I'm heading up the Engineering <coughs> Campus Sustainability Group, which is part of the Physical Resources Service kind of branch on uh, the University of Ottawa tree in, in the sort of village of Ottawa. So uh, then, then we just try to uh, look at you know where where everything fits in. Um, so just lately, uh, there's a destination 2020 that the university published, uh, a, basically a 10-year strategic plan, where I think the word sustainability was mentioned three times. So that was a huge watershed for us, and that it's it's getting a lot of traction at all kinds of levels and all kinds of corporations, and uh, so we're excited about that and we're leveraging that all we can. Um, and then you get customer service. For us, it's, it's mostly students and students' expectations. And, and guess what? Uh, most of you know who, who speak to children or teenagers or students at universities. They're very keen on sustainability in general. I think maybe more than the average person in the population is. And so they're some of the key drivers for a lot of our initiatives is the students. And uh, we engage students. Uh, John Rosado, who I mentioned, he's a sustainability manager for the campus, and half his job is engaging students. And, and he's really good at it, but uh, they, they feed all kinds of things, and they do all kinds of work for us. Uh, they, they, their contribution can't be uh, minimized in any way. And then, of course, Save the Planet, I mean, that's why we're all here. Not that we're going to waste it or anything, but we're always keen at the university in, in reducing our footprint, especially when we can do it with great spin-offs economically, and, and technically, and, and just every which way, usually uh, reducing your footprint is good business. And so uh, that's, that's the way I've been justifying and, and getting approval for spending on sustainability is, is through the bottom line, mostly. Uh, I wish I had a true bottom line, but we're, we're moving there. We're moving there slowly. A lot of the energy efficiency work is just trimming back waste, uh, but we also do a lot of work in waste management. We have a campus. Uh, mechanical, like an agro-industrial derivative mechanical composter that processes about 200 tons of organic waste a year. Uh, we have a full-time energy diversion coordinator. Uh, so, so waste is a big deal, but in, in energy and in physical waste, both ways. Uh, so, you know, all through the 80s, uh, the university progressed terrifically, but a lot of the methods were a little abrasive, and maybe it was a more challenging time with all the oil embargoes and it was more of a social imperative to, to reduce energy and so we we went a little too far in the 80s and uh, freezing in the dark kind of worked back then I think the campus energy average went from 3600 MJs to about uh, 1700 so we almost cut the campus energy intensity in half in those years but but some of it we had to undo and redo in the 90s um, and so it, it's all involves usually sustainability measures involve besides waste, physical waste. Uh, we're looking at lighting or electricity in general through pumps and, and fans. Uh, we're looking at cooling um, and, and especially interrelating. What we're doing a lot lately is, is combining heating and cooling systems for mutual benefit. And that's, that's kind of new for us at the scale we're doing it. We're, we're, basically what we're doing is we're heating with chilled water. So we're really, really lucky to have all the infrastructure we have that was built in the 70s but we have a central chill water plant but most campuses do it some don't and then we have a central heating and cooling plant so that that community loop of cooling has, is it was originally designed just to do cooling but now we're doing a whole lot of heating with the cooling system so that like the fss building on the tour you saw that the standby chiller, those who were there, the standby chiller for the data center is the main heater for the building. And it can export heat while it's doing cooling. So that means both sides 
of the cooling machine are being used. So the waste is just the energy and the noise and whatever's radiating from the compressors. It's down to almost zero waste by just combining heating and cooling systems for mutual benefit. And then water efficiency, I mean, campuses are notorious everywhere for, for uh, wasting water, and we're really good at it. And we found great business cases for, for trimming back wasted water. Um, so on the big picture, I think um, you know we'd like to be carbon neutral, uh, and it's probably not going to happen in my working life. But uh, and we could get there like tomorrow if we bought offsets, but we don't believe in offsets. Um, and uh, but carbon neutral, the first strategy is to bring our loads way down. Uh, things that speak to that is I think our our scope one greenhouse gas emissions are down 43 percent from 1974. We met the Kyoto obligation in 08. We met the Copenhagen obligation that the federal government committed to for 2020. We met it in 2011. Um, we're making progress towards it, but it, it's it's a slow turn. And uh, and the net zero importer of water, what that means to us, and we're close to that one actually, is all the rain that falls on our land is about 420,000 cubic meters of water, and we just broke through 500,000 cubic meters of water. In 1990, when I started at the university, we were. 800, over 800,000 cubic meters of water. So in spite of all the growth on campus, we've, we've cut our water use almost in half, less than half in terms of intensity basis, but I like to talk global numbers. And net zero energy importer, I mean, that's, that's really long ways off. That means renewables are gonna move in and make a lot of sense. And, uh, and we're just toying with renewables right now. We have a plan to photovoltaic install on a roof of 50 kilowatts, and it's gonna happen in the next two or three years. But uh, we need a lot more contribution from the renewals. So here's an example of the deep energy retrofits that was mentioned in that lovely bio that I didn't write, by the way, John Rousseau wrote it, but it's, uh, it was all true, but I wouldn't have wrote that. <laughs> but um, it was fun to hear. So uh, Photo Dior we were our first deep energy retrofits where we went out in 07, 08, combining heating and cooling systems for mutual benefits. So the law building, Photo Hall, is subsidizing the chemistry research building without knowing tell them because they want their kind. It's very important. So that was a good business case. You know, one point million for both. There were nine hundred thousand dollars each to renovate. A lot of renewal went into those, and we came away with the today's value of the savings from that is four hundred eighty nine. So that's allowing for some energy escalation over those years from 07 to now. Uh, the site building, uh, we, we just finished the one year monitoring and verification where we had an eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar project which we got done for five hundred and forty thousand. That was good news, and, and we we're expecting about 100,000. We got 118,000 in verified savings. Uh, the law, uh, this Morris set is the, the main library for the campus, which is the most exciting deep energy retrofit we've ever done, only because it, it's on our uh, blog, Sustainability. If you want to go see, there's a sliding 12 month window graph that shows how the total energy for the building was reduced by 70%. So that's just how wasteful campus buildings can be. And we're not alone operating wasteful buildings. They're, they're out there. And so we spent $2 million plus really a $500,000 renewal on the controls of the building, which I funded from a separate source. So it's really $2.5 million, and it's saved. We just finished the 12-month monitoring of that, $400,000. And the other one, uh, phase one at uh, Gango Hall, that's our medical faculty building, where health sciences is also uh, where they teach nurses and physiotherapy at the Smyth Road campus between Chio and the General. Um, we had phase one of 800,000, which is basically <coughs> chill water optimizing, which demonstrated annual savings of 300,000. But we also got 260,000 grant from Hydro Ottawa. Thank you very much for the Hydro Ottawa representative who's here in person. Thank you for that. Uh, but it's not shown in the funding. And uh, relamping of the campus is, is obscenely economic. I'm not sure why. Uh, and this doesn't include the grant we got from the OPA through Hydro Ottawa again of uh, about $230,000. So you deduct two hundred thirty from four hundred, dollars and you save three hundred forty one a year. It's like a nine month payback. It's, uh, it's pretty scary. So the FSS building does a lot of daylight harvesting, does a lot of heat recovery, and we cancel humidification because of the living wall, which I explained on the tour. So these are where you tunnel through cost barriers with uh, integrated design. So what drives us? I think 
students are always complaining about tuition, and, and they're funding over a third of, of our budget, our operating budget, and then the rest is taxpayers' money. So the, we're always concerned about those things, and the students remind us often. Uh, and showing others it can be done is part of what drives us, and thinking globally and acting locally. We're always in tune with whatever commitments and, and global climate issues and challenges that might be out there.